Sitting on a cliff 820 meters or, or 2,700 feet above sea level, Nimrod's Fortress is the highest castle in the Holy Land. It sits on the base of Mount Hermon, near the Syrian and Lebanon borders in the Golan Heights. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, right up there at the top of Mount Hermon, it still have a little bit of white caps left, still a little bit of snow left. And I'm here in short sleeve uh, shirt weather. It's only about a 20 minute drive from here. Well, I'm headed out. It's a three and a half hour drive each way. I'm headed way up north. I'm going to do a real nice video. It's really special. It's actually a castle. The castle, the ruins of the castle that's there, not really anything biblical but that happened there in the Bible, but the guy it was named after was in the Bible. And it's just an absolutely beautiful and picturesque scene. One of the most beautiful places in the country. So, uh, so I'm headed that way now and, uh, and I'll, get, I'll show you when we get there. Don't worry, I didn't drive that fast. I just sped the tape up. I really am a safe driver. Enjoy the rest of the video. Boy, look at this beautiful landscape, huh? Wow. Going up here, up north, man, you really are close to the border. Lebanon and Syria, but it definitely is a beautiful land. All the mountains and the greenery and everything. Wow, all the smells. Smells of, actually right now I can smell the fresh cut grass and the cows. Driving up here into the Golan Heights, man, this is beautiful country right here. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you an interesting fact of the Golan Heights I learned when I was here in the military. The Golan Heights has the highest concentration of landmines per square yard than anywhere else in the world. All over this uh, border, this northern border, Israel had placed mines here. And some of the places actually we still, we, we have very extensively mapped out. And in the army, they made us uh, rememberize certain sections and areas so that we would be able to pass through quickly and, uh, and uh, be able to uh, do things. Well, I won't go into the details, but, uh, but anyway, this is the Golan Heights is going into it and it's beautiful land and, uh, and I hope you like it. Just to show you how close we are to everything here, right there, that little peak right there, that is Syria. You see the antennas up there, that's a little base they have right there on their border. As I turn around, after the Nimrod uh, Fortress, right over there, if you see the peak, that's Mount Hermon. And on the top of that peak meets the, the borders of Israel, Syria, and Lebanon. And right over there, that's Lebanon. So just to give you an idea where we're at. In the book Micah, chapter 5, verse 6, it says, And they shall waste the land of Assyria with the sword and the land of Nimrod in the entrance thereof. Thus shall he deliver us from the Assyrian, when he cometh into our land, and when he tradeth within our borders. Nimrod was a great hero that lived during the years of the Great Flood. We also know that he became the king of Shinar, or Mesopotamia. According to the book of Genesis and the books of the Chronicles, he was the son of Cush. The Bible states that he was a mighty hunter before the Lord and began to be mighty in the earth. Also, he is associated with the Tower of Babel, which led to his reputation of a king who was rebellious against God. Now, Nimrod in Hebrew means rebel. And it was, I guess it wasn't a coincidence that his father Cush uh, knew to call him Nimrod, a rebel. When he rebelled against God, the legend has it that he was cursed right here at this place. The story tells that it was a mosquito that had came with the rain and had finished him. The fortress was built long after Nimrod's demise and was named after him because of this legend of him dying right here. This place was originally called Kalat Subeba, which means the castle of the cliff. 
Another meaning is the one who hunts. So here we see the combination of the two meanings. Because as we see, the castle is on these amazing cliffs, while Nimrod was known for being a great hunter. This castle was originally built and to watch over the, and protect the road called the Via Maris, which was the road that connected three continents, Africa, and continued on up north and split to Asia and Europe. In 1263, the fortress changed hands twice. First fell into the, Mong the Mongoloids' hands, then into the Mamluks, led by King Baibars. In 1260, that was when the famous battle between the Mamluks and the Mongolians. King Baibars became history, no history worthy when he won that battle and became the owner of this land. Then he gave this fortress to his number two, Bilak. So in turn, Bilak returned the favor by making this great inscription the largest found in Israel, praising Sultan Baybars. Here's that inscription that Bilak did for the Sultan Baybars, right here. All of this. It's the largest in inscription in stone that we have in, uh, in the Holy Land. It wasn't done by Jews, but it's still a remarkable piece of uh, archaeology. The construction of this castle is very unique. A good example of this is in the tower that was named the Beautiful Tower. In the 19th century, when Mark Twain visited the Holy Land, he came here and said that this was the most beautiful remains of a castle in the whole world, hence the Beautiful Tower. But here you can see the construction is different than you can find in the ancient ruins of Israel. You can see that in this tower where you have seven walls with slits for windows to keep control over everything around. But it seems more like something you would see in England instead of the ruins that you're used to seeing here in the state of Israel. I'll tell you what, this really is an interesting place. I've been here once before but never really took a really good look at everything. This place is absolutely amazing. It really is. Look at this place. Nice little stone seating around this beautiful little tree. I guess this is where the generals might have sat and had their meetings or something, I guess. It sure is nice. I don't know about you, but I think that mosquito still has the water infected around here. Look at that water. I'm going to throw a rock in it so you can see all the algae floating. I hope you've enjoyed these videos. Don't forget to subscribe and you're welcome to search all the other videos through the video YouTube library that we have here and watch anything that you might have missed. And I tell you what, the 360 videos that I always put out after the commentary videos like this one right here, you won't want to miss this one 
because with the views of the Golan Heights here and the mountains and Mount Hermon and the valleys it, in this castle, it is a beautiful sight. You want to catch that 360 degree video. Also, please don't forget to join us on thegoldenreport.com. And until next time, God bless.